Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, and thank you for inviting me here. Thank you for this occasion to speak at Bilbao, which is always inspiring for, for me and for the Commission and for this opportunity to listen to you, to people who are experienced policymakers, researchers, and entrepreneurs, <coughs> and talking about Industry 4.0. Now, I will be short, and I would like to share with you a couple of reflections on Industry 4.0 in the broader context of industrial policy, and maybe tell you what we do in the European Commission and what we plan to do in the near future. So let me start by stating the obvious, that is that Industry 4.0 is at the heart of our industrial strategy for accelerating the transition towards a smart, innovative, and sustainable industry in Europe, and for keeping abreast of our competitors for keeping the industrial leadership that we have in Europe. Now, we've seen in recent years quite many initiatives that have been launched to promote Industry 4.0 at very different levels of governance. We've seen something on the European level, but we see also initiatives in the member states and among the regions. And um, your original initiative, Basque Industry 4.0 Strategy, is an excellent example here. It's three pillars for creating a Basque Digital Innovation Hub, developing training and education activities dedicated to Industry 4.0, and helping companies creating new business models around it, will give you another spin in the development of the Basque industry and economy. And I think it shows very well the value of the sort of holistic approach. The holistic approach that embraces innovation, new technologies, and skills are together while developing new business models. And this is important because innovation is becoming more and more difficult because it requires more and more people to do the same step at the same moment. So we need cooperation. We need cooperation at different levels of the governance. We need cooperation between Europe, between member states, and between regions, between public administration and the, and the private sector. And I emphasize this word cooperation because it's very close to the concept of industrial policy that in particular has been advocated by, by Danny Roderick. And I am bringing his name here because we think that it's very relevant for what we are doing both at the European level and in the Basque country. So it departs to a certain level from this idea of, of sectoral and horizontal industrial policy or vertical and framework conditions, and it looks much more into sort of structural cooperation between public authorities and industry in order both to spot the barriers to the development and the opportunities. So the focus is on the strategic cooperation, strategic cooperation that involves both sides and shares responsibility between both sides, public administration and the industry or the economy. And this allows for creating a sort of permanent detection mechanism that allows us to pick up on what is new in the economy. And it requires a lot of dialogue, a lot of monitoring, and a lot of evaluation. It is also based on this concept of discovery, because we don't know the technology is so complex, it is changing so quickly, that we don't know what is expecting us at the end of the road on which we are embarking. But we know that we have to do this work we have to do this road all together. And if you recall, that concept of smart specialization was also termed the discovery journey, because it was based on the same premises. And the last point which Rodig is making, and, and I want to emphasize it as well, is that this transformation, this industrial change, also needs to benefit the whole of the society. It is so because on one hand, technologies and industry have much more bigger impact on the society than it used to be in the past. So this should be accompanied by more responsibility. Already today, the industry sometimes is training more people than the public administration does. You have enterprises that train up to one, two, three million people. The industry is also generating a lot of knowledge. The industry is delivering skills which are useful to the whole of society. If we think about what is on the top right now, critical thinking, creativity, capacity to talk with people coming from different environments, these are all skills which are necessary in our democratic society. 
So we should also take it into account when talking about the industry and about industrial transformation, not least talking about social fairness and the perception of social fairness. Because when the industry, industrial policy and the economy is perceived as being unfair, that leads to the waves of populism we have seen quite recently in Europe. So if you look from this perspective into at, at what we are doing in Europe, um, I would like maybe to single out three elements. One is that, as I mentioned, innovation is complex. It requires acting at the same time of many fronts. So that is something we are trying to emphasize when we adopted communication and industrial policy back in September 2017. We are trying to look at different aspects of industrial policy and bring them all together into one picture. So at the time we are talking about the need for the better functioning of the single market. The single market needs to reinvent itself all the time because otherwise it will not catch up with the new economic development and will become an obstacle. We need to talk about embracing digitalization, promoting low carbon and circular economy, giving people better skills and ensuring access to global value chains for SMEs. So in a way this industrial policy communication created a sort of or, or, or laid the foundation for the structured approach to industrial policy which runs across different departments of the Commission and which requires from us very much across the silo thinking. We are also trying to create the elements of this constant governance, constant dialogue with the industry. And uh, the first element that we put in place was industry days. This time in the, uh, I would like to use this occasion to, to invite you to the third edition of Industrial Days, the, 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 which will take place on the 5th and 6th February of 2019, because it serves very much as a point of dialogue between what we do in the Commission and between how it is perceived by the industry and by the entrepreneurs. And this year, we're also trying to launch some new ideas, also in view of, of, of attracting talents to industry, improving the image of the industry. We'll have a young forum where we invite young, talented people who think about the future to industry to come. They will have a dedicated program. They will have an opportunity to talk to the leaders of the industry. We are also launching the idea of open doors. When we ask the industry on the day or the week of February to open the door, invite young people to come, to show them that the industry can be fascinating and relevant to their futures. Now, I think the next element we put into this jigsaw was uh, Industry 2030 group, and I'm glad that I have some members of this very prestigious group here in the public. And this industry has been set up in order to create a sort of longer term vision, Industry 2030, that would give all of us a sense of direction and sense of, of, of imperative for action. Uh, um, the, the group is right now finalizing its report, which should be ready for adoption somewhere in the, in the summer next year. And this report will be underpinned by another one, which is called the Report of Strategic Forum on IPCIs. IPCIs are important project of common European economic interest. There was a tool that was invented a couple of years ago in order to foster cooperation between member states who want to invest together in something which is new and emerging and innovative and has importance for the whole of European economy. And it starts to work right now. And as an example, I can give you, we are right now very much working on the IPCI for batteries. That is the technology that we left behind by our Asian competitors, but which has a great potential. So we created so-called Alliance for Batteries. And it's important to look at this and see also the new role for the Commission as a sort of facilitator and moderator of the discussion. So we brought to one table all those who have an interest in batteries, who have technologies, and we make them speak together. And as a result, we'll have this important European project, which allows for more flexible treatment of state aid. But we also have a lot of private investment. A year ago, the investment gap for the development of this new generation of batteries, which will be used in electrical cars, was around 2 billion euros. Today, we have pledges which fill up almost 1.5 billion euro. So it is important that we can bring together the industry, can bring together the member states and make them speak one language. This is also about cooperation. Maybe before I move along to one more 
uh, mechanism project of European Commission, which is relevant in this, in this exercise, let me say one more word about Industry 4.0 and about what Roderick Tame that termed diffusion of, of knowledge on constraints and opportunities. One of the biggest worries we have right now in Europe is the innovation gap. The innovation gap that separ separates leaders and laggards, those who are best at innovation technologies and those who are, those who are slow takers. And this innovation gap also translates into territorial dimension. We have member states who constantly are on the top of innovation scoreboard, but we have also those who stagnate or are at the lower end of the table. The same with regions, the same with enterprises. And increasingly, we see the risk that the same may happen to, to the labor market, which will also have two ends, the, the high end and the low end. And for this, to prevent this from happening, we really need to put a lot of effort on diffusion of technologies and of, of, on uptake of the new technologies. And that is why the success in, in making this transformation, making Industry 4.0 happen is so crucial for the European economy. Because we've seen that there was the departure of industrial jobs, with the idea that for many people, the industry is the only future they can have for themselves and for their kids. This creates a feeling of deep injustice and uncertainty, which translates then into very, or into sort of populist behavior. Um, and this is particularly relevant for skills. And I'm glad to see that in the Basque Industry 4.0 strategy, skills are so prominent. Because if you are telling now to the truck drivers that in five or 10 years, their job will disappear, we also have to tell them what they can do. And we also have to accompany them. We have to prepare them, we have to give them perspective. Because otherwise, we will have labor market looking a little bit like in the Silicon Valley. We'll have fantastic creative jobs for the few, and then the majority of jobs for Filipino clinic ladies. And this is not something we want to have in Europe. A um, couple of words on the platform of on smart specialization, smart specialization for industrial modernization, something for which we are responsible together with colleagues from JRC and DG Regio, and something we consider a very important European project. And I'm mentioning this platform because tomorrow morning, we organize in Bilbao, in association with the Basque government, the first meeting of the so-called steering committee of this platform, which brings together more than 80 regions from Europe. And clearly, the objective of the platform is to contribute to the modernization of European industry by facilitating the development of interregional investment projects, so projects along value chain. Uh, and with this, we also want to find a way of combining public and private funds and create a sort of pipeline of projects that would contribute to industrial modernization. Today, we have 18 interregional partnerships working on traditional sectors such as textiles, sports, tourism, but also on emerging areas such as cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, photonics, and industry 4.0. And this is a sort of long-term project. Again, this is a sort of new vehicle for structural cooperation, for structural dialogue with the regions that should allow us to capture everything which is new, that should allow us to react very quickly to the needs of regions, to the needs of private investors. So we built around the platform a number of, of projects that are actually helping regions to get together and to invest together. And there uh, will be quite soon a new edition where we will fund additional experts in finance to assist regions in, in making the investment ideas mature so they can become bankable investment projects. We hope that due to this new action, we can support around 30, 40 projects in the next couple of years. And we'll do it in a very close cooperation with the European Investment Bank, because much of the funding, much of the guarantees, loans, can come from there. At the same time, new opportunities will be opened through the new proposal of the Commission for the next programming period, starting in 2021, to support interregional innovation projects 
in the framework of new European cooperation program. And it's very important because it was one of the deficiencies we spotted, we spotted now. That is, when we have a number of regions that want to invest jointly in one project, one demonstration facility, uh, a pilot line, we have no financial tools that will allow us to do so. So this new idea of, of so-called Interreg 5 is actually devised in order to fill this gap. Maybe let me finish then with a with couple of words concerning the next multi financial framework and the place that the industry will be taking there, in particular Industry 4.0. Um, we will have the single market program, which will particularly look at the continuation and enhancement of our cluster cooperation activities, and at the same time will provide support to Enterprise Europe network, that is helping companies to become more innovative and uptake new technologies, including Industry 4.0. We have the cohesion policy with a lot of emphasis on industrial transformation and new generation of smart specialization strategies, as well as through European ter territorial cooperation, where, where I mentioned already the new component, so-called Component 5, aiming at funding concrete interregional investment projects. We'll have Horizon Europe where for the first time we will be practicing co-creation process. Uh, there is one of the most important clusters in this program dealing with digitalization and industrial policy, where we will program jointly the use of those funds together with DigiConnect and DGRTD. We'll have also under European Social Fund a possibility to build on the success of so-called blueprint for skills. This is the idea that we should look also at skill from the point of view of industrial policy, from the demand side. So those projects that we are uh, realizing today are pilots, uh, and basically they allow us to detect together with the industry the needs in the, in the perspective of the next three, five years, and then team them up together with training institutions in order to deliver those skills. And we launched such schemes already in 10 or so sectors so different as textiles, tourists, but also artificial intelligence or batteries right now. So I believe that we set up the next programming period for the next seven years, and we put there all the necessary means and support to research organizations, to RTOs, to companies, to develop and adopt Industry 4.0 solutions through different EU programs and action. And let me maybe end this by saying that I'm very confident that Basque Country will be among the leaders. Thank you very much for your attention.